Hello, 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 hello. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to moderator Mark Plot and any other moderators who are here or are showing up. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. We're going to dive in today. We're going to talk about Elon Musk, Tesla, some SpaceX. Uh, Twitter's going to come up. Um, after this live stream, we're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk more about Trump on Twitter. That's going to be on the free speech platform, The Daily Lie, warrenredlick.locals.com. There's a link in the top of the chat. There's a link in the description below. YouTube has a history of censorship. There's things I'm going to say on that, and there's things that might come up in chats that can't talk about. That will be on The Daily Lie, warrenredlick.locals.com. We're going to talk about Trump on Twitter first, talk for about 15 minutes about what can be said more publicly, and then we're going to go to supporter-only mode on that platform and talk a little bit more depth about some of the things related to that. So I'm just going to hint, I'm going to talk a little bit about Twitter on here today. Uh, we're going to go about an hour. Uh, we're going to start off a little different. I'm going to start off with um, a little bit of Q&A from supporters on the Locals platform. If you join the Locals platform, warrenredlick.locals.com, you can just join for free and watch live streams and read some content for free. About half the content is free. Supporters get access to more content. In today's live stream on that platform, the the part of the live stream will go supporter only. You, I go public for everybody, free members first, and then I go to private after that. Um, but I also allow, I also take questions from supporters on the Locals platform on Patreon and from YouTube channel members, and I address those, and I'm going to address them first today, trying something a little bit different. So, Chokinen88888 says, what happens when Elon hands over the Twitter CEO role to someone else? Will the media stop going after Elon Tesla, et cetera? Is it woke guilty by association rules? The media has been going after Elon for years. The Democratic Party has been going after Elon for two years. So uh, the idea that the media is going after Elon or they're going after Elon because of Twitter is misleading. They've been going after Elon uh, for two years solid and the media has been going after him forever. So they're not going after him because of Twitter. They're going after him because they're going after him. And Twitter's just another excuse to go after him. So uh, the idea, and, and there's, a, there's an implicit idea there that somehow Elon's doing something wrong. He isn't. Elon has bought a platform that was struggling. It was probably going to go under. Something that had done a terrible job for investors over the last, I don't know, 10 years. And Elon sees a way of taking a platform that has critical mass of an audience and turning it into something much better that will ultimately be worth 10 times more than what he paid for it. Even though he overpaid for it compared to what it was worth today, that critical mass of audience is very valuable and it would have taken a long time and he might not have succeeded at building up a critical mass on a new platform. So that I think is the reason. Um, I don't think Elon's handing over the Twitter CEO role to anyone anytime soon. I think it's gonna be at least a year. Maybe it's three months. But they got to get the code working. They've got to get the, the platform running more efficiently. There's, there's a million things that he wants to get done. I think that he's probably putting 60 hours a week or more into Twitter right now. In two or three months, he'll be able to back off of that and put 30 or 40 hours a week into Twitter. And then six months after that, maybe a year after that, he'll be able to back off and let somebody else take over as CEO. But he needs to establish you know, a corporate culture which was obviously trouble at Twitter before. The corporate culture at Twitter was obviously trouble before. They didn't work. They didn't show up to work. They, you know, they had 7,500 or 8,000 employees when the platform hadn't improved materially from two years ago when they had half as many employees. I'm making up numbers, but they, they dramatically increased the number of employees, but they didn't improve the customer experience, the user experience. And Elon is working on improving, just like they do with FSD. Let's make this thing work faster. Let's make this thing work better. He's figuring out how do we make this software work better? How do we make this work better? And that's going to take time. And you have to change the culture because the culture at Twitter was toxic. It was anti-owner. You know, like, like Tesla and SpaceX are run for the investors. They are run, And Elon is the biggest shareholder. He's the biggest investor in Tesla and SpaceX. And now he's the biggest investor in Twitter. And Twitter's going to have to be run to satisfy the owner because the owner is running the company. And the owner is no longer happy with having the... I saw this great... Uh, tweet talking about the professional managerial class that this is a this is actually a war between the entrepreneurial class and the the investor class 
and the professional managerial class. And the professional managerial class has been telling us for years, investors don't know how to run companies. Entrepreneurs don't know how to run companies. We need professional managers to run companies. And professional managers basically create their own jobs and expand their jobs and create a lot of dead weight that doesn't make anything better. Engineering run companies are run more efficiently. And we see that with Tesla and SpaceX. So, yeah, I mean, I think he'd like to find a CEO for Twitter. But, you know, that's it. I, my ballpark is that's a year away. I think people who think it's going to happen in three months are, are missing it. Um, Swiss Uncle says, decompose where Twitter is going by analyzing what WeChat Ch Chinese app does. So I don't know the WeChat Chinese app that well. Chokunen uh, is correct that I don't use it. Um, he says that the CCP uses it for track people and for other sketchy stuff that Elon won't do. I'm not sure what Elon would or wouldn't do. I'm not convinced he wouldn't do something like that, but I don't think that's his goal. I think, you know... He wants to make it a better platform that's more usable. I think that they're going to add features. My understanding of WeChat is very limited, but I think WeChat allows payments. It's very clear that Elon wants to add payment to the Twitter platform. Uh, Elon has said, I, I don't, I, again, I don't know about WeChat. I know some features that it's very obvious that Elon wants to do. He wants to make it so that large accounts, accounts with large followings that create content and get engagement from users, particularly video, I think, but maybe not limited to video, he wants... Twitter users to be rewarded if they generate revenue for the, if they generate engagement on the platform, if they can find a way to monetize it, they want to reward those, um, those users. And like, like I'm doing video right now on YouTube in the future, I'm probably going to do video on Twitter. I think they have a plan to make Twitter more rewarding. And I'll say that I did a recent test of a short, short video on YouTube versus the same short video on Twitter. And I got five times as many views on Twitter as I got on YouTube. So I think there's promise there that, uh, I, you know, I'm not leaving YouTube anytime soon. I think we're probably a year away from that, that even be remotely possible. But when they create a user, and I, and I don't, if I post my videos on Twitter, it will not impair my YouTube results because my YouTube views are driven by YouTube. When I tweet on Twitter, hey, check out my YouTube video, it generates almost no views. So if I, I might as well just post the video native to Twitter and native to YouTube, and I don't think it's going to cut into the audience of each other that much. So it's just two different platforms. And over time, if Twitter becomes that much more valuable, I may start telling my YouTube users, my YouTube following, hey, we're over on Twitter now, but I don't know when that's going to happen, if ever. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay, so I just want to address that first. If you support me on the Locals platform or on Patreon, I check Patreon and YouTube channel. I invited... Uh, questions and comments there as well. Patreon is not a free speech platform, so I, I've been doing more content on locals and shit. I'm gradually hoping to shift my Patreon supporters over to locals. Uh, I think that would be nice if you're on Patreon. At least support me on locals. If you want to switch, I'd understand. Um, but I, I'm growing the locals platform. I feel good about that. I'm going to be making more content on the locals platform. So if you, But if you support me on one of those platforms, then that... Q&A we just did at the beginning is something you can participate in the future. All right, so let's dive into uh, Tesla news. So the biggest Tesla news, I suppose, of the week is that uh, Peterson Automotive Museum is having an exhibit. This is not the kind of thing that excites me, but I see a lot of other people in Tesla community excited about this event. There are prototypes of Cybertruck, Roadster, other uh, Tesla, you know, notable museum-worthy vehicles from Tesla's history. There's a Tesla bot. Um, on display. So if you are near the Peterson Autom Automotive, Automotive Museum, I believe that's in Los Angeles, probably worth a visit. I, you know, not something I'd be excited about, but I think the initial Cybertruck prototype is there. and People are looking at that. Marcus Brownsley, uh, MKBHD, did a video from there, I think before the exhibit opened, he got in. Um, also, Model S received the highest overall score from, score from Euro NCAP among any vehicle tested under the current protocol. This is a safety test. So we have consistently seen that Tesla vehicles are the most crash-worthy and most safe vehicles, crash avoidance and crash survival of all vehicles on the planet. It continues to be true. Model S just, just nailed it. This is after, I think, Model Y had a great result. I think Model Y had the best result ever, and Model S just had a better result than Model Y. So they're they're clearly topping the platform there. Um, also, energy efficiency, Model Three. You know, just this is these are things that happened in the past week. Model Three just got another win for efficiency, so that's great news. I don't get excited about like I just this is news that I'm telling you about. Like I you know I think that the biggest news about Tesla going forward is going to be how many vehicles that they produce in Q4. 
What does that mean for, for 2023? I'm going to talk about that. Let's talk about that now. This is what I think is, you know, what, and we don't, I don't have news yet, right? The, what we're looking for to see, what we're looking to see is what is production in Q4. And I think even more than production in Q4 or deliveries in Q4, what's the run rate at the end of the year? Elon is hoping to achieve a run rate of 40,000 40, vehicles a week by the end of the year. If they achieve 40,000 vehicles a week by the end of the year, that's a production rate of 2 million vehicles a year. If they grow at 50%, that means at the end of next year, they'll be at a production rate of 3 million vehicles a year. And we can expect total production for 2023 to be in the ballpark of 2.3 million. Could be more, could be less. You know, it's the slope of the curve. It's not going to be 2.5 million if that's the result, unless they ramp faster and they get above 3 million at the end of 2023, which I would bet they're going to try to get above 3 million by the end of 2023. And then you could conceivably reach 2.5 million for the year, but you know that's a little optimistic, and I've, I've been over optimistic a lot lately. So when you're but when you're looking toward the future and you're looking, you, you have to ask the question: What are earnings per share? If you're if you're trying to value the stock today and you're trying to value the stock in the future, one of the critical questions is: What are earnings per share going to be in 2023? And that's driven by how many vehicles they produce and deliver. Also driven by Tesla energy, driven by Tesla energy which is coming, it's driven to some extent by how quickly FSD gets better because if FSD, there's a certain threshold where FSD crosses this threshold and people start to get it more. People start to buy more FSD subscriptions or they start to buy more F FSD add-ons to their cars. If that day hits, then earnings per share goes up. If Megapack and Powerwall and Tesla Solar ramp faster, which they they have they appear to be now on a 150 to 200% of your growth rate, which means you're going to see that become a bigger part of Tesla's revenue story and probably profit story. So I think analyst, analyst estimates for Tesla earnings per share for 2023 around $5 or $6 a share, most analysts. At a share price of $180, that's a PE ratio of only, a forward PE of only 30. But if you look at Tesla, that's, that's really not much growth in Tesla earnings. And if you realize that Tesla earnings have been growing kind of fast, and if you realize that the Inflation Reduction Act is going to contribute to earnings, economies of scale are going to contribute to earnings, it's possible that prices are going to come down and that's going to, that's going to be a negative for earnings, but it's also possible prices are going to go up if FSD take rate goes up. Um, it's possible that profit that the profit margins in Tesla Energy are lower than the profit margins in vehicles, but I still think if that grows, that's going to benefit earnings. And like even Gary Black, who I don't think is a genuine Tesla bull, he's at like like eight dollars a share for 2023. I think we may see ten or twelve dollars a share again. I get overly optimistic sometimes, but let's suppose we get to ten dollars a share in 2023, and you can buy the stock for 180 dollars today. That's an eighteen dollar. That's an eighteen price earnings ratio, forward price earnings ratio. That's like. That's like a barely growing company. That's a PE ratio for a barely growing company when the company is growing at 50% a year. So I just want to hit on that point. And you know, I don't have a solution to this now. We're going to know in early January how many vehicles did they produce and deliver in Q4. We're not going to know it before. We're going to get hints. There's whispers out of China that this is happening. A lot depends on Giga Berlin and Giga Texas ramping. Everything I'm hearing, they're ramping well. I don't have any inside information. I'm just, you know, seeing what I'm seeing. I think Shanghai is going to continue to grow. I think Fremont's going to continue to grow. We're now seeing Model S and Model X deliveries. I believe it's Model S and maybe Model X also deliveries in Europe. Maybe that's going to be a something of an increase in Model S and X production because they were only around 20,000 a quarter and maybe they reached 25,000 a quarter or more because they're, they now have a market in Europe. And do they start delivering to China? If that can they bump up that a little? You know, that's not a huge factor in long-term revenue or profit, but it doesn't hurt to see that bump. So those are some things that are going on there. Let me just look at the chat. Tesla Economist predicts thirty billion dollars Tesla profits minimum next year. Not minimum. I don't agree with that. Um, I think that you know Gary Black's at eight dollars a share, which is probably twenty-four billion. Uh, you know, there's just so much that can go wrong. We've seen this year in year after year after year. We're seeing all these headwinds, these force majeure events. You've got this, you know, public health issue that happened for the last few years. You've got a war somewhere. You've got a potential trade war with China going on. There's so many things going on that are tricky and uncomfortable that I just don't know. I, I don't know what to say about that. 
Uh, Jupiter James says, how do you become a moderator? I made moderators. I made more moderators than we need. Mark is actually probably the only moderator we need. So there's no, there's no particular advantage in being a moderator, and, and Mark does a great job at it. So uh, it, it's, it's helpful, and like I said, Mark does a great job at it. Jim Whitehead and Mark Potochnik are, are moderators as well, and the moderators are great. So but I don't agree that you can say there's a minimum for earnings for profits for I think we're talking about net profit of 30 billion I you know my number is about 30 billion I and I could I think it could be 36 billion I just it's just so hard to wrap your head around it and we don't know how the inflation reduction act is going to play in um we don't know how the delivery uh the delivery lag versus production is going to affect things we don't know what's going to happen with pricing our price is going to come down there's a lot of things like that where do I see this stock in 20 so CM asks, where do I see the stock by December 2023, bear and bull case? That's still, to me, a short-term stock price prediction. Um, I really think what we need to look at is where are we going to be in the third week of January in 2024 when we hear what the earnings were for the whole year, right? And what does that tell us about 2023 and what does that tell us about 2024? So go out to January 2024 and ask yourself the question, how many vehicles did Tesla produce in 2023? How many did they deliver in 2023? What happened with Tesla Energy? What happened with FSD? And what was earnings per share for the year? So if the earnings per share for the year are $5 a share and Tesla produced less than 2 million vehicles in 2023, that's not a good sign. If Tesla produces 2.5 million vehicles in 2023 and earnings per share are $12 a share, oh, that's and FSD is delivered and, you know, and we're, we're like starting trials of robo-taxi networks, then, you know, the stock should be through the roof. But you just can't, like, the, the idea, the thing I don't like about short-term stock price predicting is it's just inherently difficult. There's so many uh, complexities. You can look at the long, the long curve of, of growth, and you can see that whatever economic crisis happens, Tesla's going to grow through that crisis, and it's going to perform better than the other companies. And then you just hope that it's somewhere we're going to get a two or three year run when we don't have crisis, right? Can we get past this situation where there's a crisis every three months or every week or whatever that we're constantly panicking about stuff? Um, so I, I, I don't like making short-term predictions like that. I feel like I tried making short-term price predictions like that in the past and I feel like I got burned and I'm just going to stop doing it. Um, do I think there will be paid robo-taxi uh, rides in 2023 i think there's a shot at it and i think the first paid robo taxi ride will be somewhere like san francisco or chandler arizona where there are existing waymo and cruise trials uh, wherever there's an existing ro robo taxi trial going on from another company it would seem fairly straightforward for tesla to participate in that system and run tesla robo taxis in the same system but i don't know um so gigantic wealth transfer from retail to institutional, yes. Uh, all right. Master plan, I think, is probably on hold because Elon's busy with Twitter. A recession is when your neighbor loses your job. A depression is when you lose your job. Yeah. So we covered this. We covered that. Okay. So just some, some little bit of Elon on Twitter, but about Tesla. This is probably the other big piece of news is that Tesla FSD 10.69.3.1 going to wide release now. I don't have it. Let me just check real quick. I don't have it yet on the Model X Plaid. I believe that I have it on my Model 3. Uh, let's see. Okay, I don't have it. I don't have it on my Model X Plaid yet, but it's available on my Model 3. I don't know if it's been installed yet, but my, my child drives the Model 3. So, but also, they've started sending out version 11. So they're simultaneously releasing an update in version 10.69.3, and Chuck Cook drove it. And if you check out Chuck Cook's channel, he just did some videos of driving it and how it's doing better in, his, in the Chuck Cook unprotected left turn. And then uh, version 11 is coming, which is the single stack, which means you no longer have a separate software system for drive for highway driving that highway driving and uh, highway driving and city streets driving are all under the same platform and i think i think there's been significant improvements to fsd beta on the city streets 
that will ultimately be better for highway, even though the highway stack is very good. Yeah, the software update, I haven't installed it yet, but the software update is ready on the Model 3, the 10.69.3.1. So Elon pointed about Cybertruck. This is just sort of like a light Cybertruck or something special that comes along once in a while. So this is up to the Tesla board, I think is a reference to share buybacks. People are, can, are pressuring Elon for share buybacks. I think this is misguided. This is short-term thinking. Share buybacks do not affect the company in the long term. They just help margin traders and short-term investors, maybe. I think there's a there's a mixed impact of share buybacks. It may be valuable, it may not. Uh, doesn't hurt, I guess, but um, there were some concerns that Elon wasn't spending significant time at Tesla. Elon says this is back about a week ago. I have Tesla covered too. It'll be their part of this week. I just saw some account that reports on Elon's travels and his jet landed in Austin maybe yesterday. So he's probably working on Tesla right now. And then, yeah, he's vesting in Tesla is picking on Jeff Bezos, who made some comment about green investing. So Elon's teasing Bezos that he's investing in Tesla, which of course he isn't. Um, turning to Twitter. Um, it's tragic to note how far the New York Times has fallen. Um, this is a reference to Matt Taibbi, who is a very good writer and somebody I follow. Matt Taibbi is one of the dissidents I recommend people follow. The New York Times carried the, the, the Russia collusion story, which turned out to be false for a long time, got a Pulitzer Prize for a baloney story, and Elon's criticizing them for that. And of course, the New York Times is very critical of Elon on Twitter. Um, okay, forget it. Who cares? Uh, who made this decision is CBS News announced that they were going to stop tweeting on Twitter because of concerns about the safety of the platform. This is this is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'm going to talk in much more depth about this on the Locals platform, on the Daily Lie. The Daily Lie is, is on Locals. Locals is a free speech platform. There's a limit to what I can say on YouTube without fear that they're going to censor me. So I just say it on the other platform and I can say whatever I want. I can swear. I can bring up, you know, conspiracy theories or whatever, and I don't get in trouble with YouTube, but if I talk about that stuff on here, so we can't talk about that more, but uh, I will say this, CBS News gets very little engagement on Twitter. Their account is, they have almost 9 million followers, and they'll tweet something and get like 35 likes and some replies. They tweeted something about Taylor Swift, one of the most popular figures in the world, and they got 100 likes on their tweet. I mean. That's not a lot of, I, I get a hundred likes on some of my tweets and I have 30, uh, 40, what do I have? 40, uh, 41,000 followers on Twitter. They have more than 20 times as many followers, as, more than 200 times as many followers than me on Twitter. Or is it 2,000 times as many? It's, it's, it's more than 2,000 times as many followers than me on Twitter and I have tweets to get more engagement than theirs. You know, they're, they're, they're not a terribly important audience and that's why I think Elon said, okay, forget it, who cares? Uh, hey, stop defaming me. This is a this is a particularly burning one for me. Uh, the Anti Defamation League is an, a Jewish organization that fights against uh, anti Semitism. And Jonathan Greenblatt, who's the president of the ADL, criticized Elon for bringing what's his name Voldemort back on Twitter. <laughs> like, look, you can you can say what you want. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to talk about this more on the free on on locals when we're done. Like we're, it's 1.24 p.m. here Eastern time right now. So in a little more than a half an hour, we're going to wrap up this live stream. I'm going to go on the Locals platform. We're going to talk there about this topic. But it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm relatively pro-Israel. I don't think we should give him money, but I'm relatively pro-Israel. And we have not had a more pro-Israel president in the history of the United States than, than, than Donald Trump. And the anti-defamation, and, and he has a Jew, he has a, a Jewish son-in-law, his, da his daughter who married the Jewish son-in-law converted to Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, which is like, that's so far Jewish that I don't, I, I get uncomfortable around those people. I'm, I'm just kidding a little. And, um, and, and Trump embraced his daughter becoming Jewish, embraced his Jewish son-in-law. And the anti-defamation league is upset about Trump being on Twitter. Like, he was the most pro-Israel president, very supportive of the Jewish community. Why is the Anti-Defamation League concerned about Donald Trump? Because they're captured by the Democratic Party. They don't care about, like, what do you stand for? The same thing with the ACLU, these, these liberal organizations. Like, what do you stand for? The ACLU used to be about, used to be about free speech. The ACLU marched to protect the, the ACLU fought to protect the right of Nazi free speech in America. 
in the 70s or the 80s in Skokie, Illinois. Google ACLU Skokie. They, th their organization fought to protect the rights. What's the name? Ira. I can't remember the guy's name. They fought for the right of, of, of Nazis to, to have free speech. And now they don't want Trump to have free speech. It, it's like, what are you doing? So, so the tweet who made this decision was CBS decided to stop tweeting on Twitter like anybody cares. But, you know, Elon wanted to know who made the decision. You know, there's no, nobody's standing up and saying, I made this decision, right? It's like CBS made this decision clandestinely behind the scenes. Who knows? Um, now, Twitter is, this is what's amazing about Twitter, right? They fired, who knows? They fired a bunch of people. A whole bunch of people quit. They're probably down to less than half staff and maybe down to a, like a third of the staff they had like three weeks ago. And Twitter's still up. Twitter's still running. Twitter's growing. They're, the usage is growing. Now that Elon's there, people are paying more attention. I'm sure now that Trump's on, it's going to be up again. And they're doing the World Cup now. So uh, server load is insane. Twitter's servers are getting, you know, bombarded with traffic. And there's a good stress test before the World Cup tomorrow. And then, oh, sure as night follows day was a reference to Fitton had said something about, you know, Q Biden and the Democrats and the media all attacking Elon. That's all they do is attack Elon. So the, the, I think the biggest thing on Twitter is Elon did a poll about whether to reinstate former President Trump. And the, the vote was yes. It was a close vote. But 15 million votes. Elon reported at one point 134 million people had seen the poll. Trump has so far said he's not coming back on Twitter. He's got his own platform, Truth Social, which my best guess is Truth Social has, I mean, this is from Wikipedia. Truth Social has less than 2 million users a month, active users a month. This poll got 15 million votes. Just this one poll got 15 million votes. And Elon said 134 million people looked at the poll. So there's a lot more going on at Twitter. And Trump has a following on Twitter. It's he's probably got more followers on Twitter than he's got on Truth Social. He probably should be there, but whatever. Um, Trump for Florida governor, no thanks. I don't want Trump for any office. All right, so let me dive into the chat here. I think that's, that's everything I wanted to talk about. So let me just dive into the chat. Uh... Now, Elon's not going to be governor of Florida. The, anybody talking about Elon running for president or Elon running for governor? No. And, uh, I mean, we're going to, let's see. I know Tesla's not related, but after seeing your experience on YouTube, I started my keto intermittent fasting diet a week and a half ago, and I feel great. Thank you, Jupiter. Um, I, when I talk about what I do for diet and exercise, I don't recommend that anybody do what I do. I think you've got to figure out what works for you. I get annoyed at people who try to give me diet advice. Like, everything works different. Everybody's different. Um, I go to the gym. I mean, I'll just tell you, I go to the gym almost every day. Today, I'm not going to the gym, probably. I might might squeeze a gym run in, but I'll go tomorrow. But I'm I'm moving stuff. I'm, I think in a few days, I'll be out of this space. It's a very nice space, but I'm moving into my own space uh, this next couple of days. And hopefully, I'll be done in the next couple of days. And I'll be in a new space, and I'll be getting used to that. But you know, since I'm doing a lot of lifting of stuff and moving stuff, I don't, I don't think I need to go to the gym today. Maybe not tomorrow. Um, Donnie Football says Trump did a great job as president. He did some good things. What he did with Israel was good. He spent like a crazy amount of money. He overreacted to the thing, the public health incident. In my opinion, he overreacted to it. He didn't overreact as badly as others, but he overreacted to it. Um, oh, Randy Ratliff, Ratcliffe. Do you not expect big gains in Q4 earnings? Uh, Q4 earnings will, should be up. I think the question is how much up they will be. I expect... Troy Teslike is getting very pessimistic about delivery numbers. I don't know what delivery numbers to expect. Uh, you know, 450,000 is out. You know, is, are they going to deliver 425,000? Are they going to deliver 415,000? I don't know. I think most people would agree that they're not going to deliver 450,000 for Q4. So if they deliver over 400,000, then, you know, earnings should be up. It's a question of how much up. Like, if we get over $1.25 a share, that indicates that 2023 is going to be more than $5 a share, right? If we get to $1.50 a share, then four times $1.50 is $6. So you would think we're going to at least do $6 a share in 2023 and likely more because it's growing. So it's sort of like, what's the number? What's the earnings? And we're going to we find out that number in the third week of January, I think, of what's the, what's the earnings per share. Middle East Peace, uh, I think he made some progress on Middle East Peace. But Middle East peace is, is fragile. Oh, I voted yes on the poll, and I don't like Trump at all. I voted yes on the poll because I, I believe in free speech. 
Elon should buy Truth Social. No. Um, how are you doing? Did the house sell? The house is not sold yet. We had one inquiry this week. This is a slow period. I'm expecting that interest in the house will pick up in December. I vote for anyone who's delivered energy independence, low inflation, secure borders, Abraham Middle East Accords. We didn't have secure borders under anybody. We've never had secure borders. We're not going to have secure borders. Secure borders is a fantasy. Jim and I have this argument all the time. It's Jim Manley. Uh, low inflation... Trump spent like a bandit and he printed money like a bandit. The low the inflation we're seeing today is partly the result of Trump's behavior. Blaming it all on Biden is, I mean, I'm not a fan of Biden either, but blaming that all on Biden is, is a stretch. What's this? Jess, Jessco 1227 says, your thoughts on the stock being detached from the fundamentals. Tesla stock is at a PE of 55 and growing 40 to 55, 40 to 50 percent a year. Amazon has an 88 price earnings ratio growing at 10%. Yes, yes, I agree with that. I don't I don't discuss options. I am thinking about buying some long calls on Tesla stock soon, but I don't um I don't I definitely agree that Tesla's PE ratio is out of whack compared to its growth and compared to other companies with much lesser growth. And I think Amazon's a good example, but I think forward PE is even more starkly a contrast. I like to think about the future rather than the present. I think Tesla's earnings lately have been suppressed. And I think if their earnings break out, and if we see a dollar 80 a share for Q4, that's a really good sign. We see a dollar 80 a share for Q4, which that's probably overly optimistic. Let's be clear. But, you know, we just look at the number we see for Q4, which again is third week of January. We're going to see that number. That tells you what to expect for 2023. It should be at least 4x that number. So if we see a dollar 50 share, we expect earnings to be at least $6 a share and likely $8 a share. We see a dollar 80. That's more than seven dollars a share at times four. It's like seven twenty, and now we're looking at ten, maybe ten dollars a share. So, remember when we celebrated going over three hundred thousand in a quarter? Yup. Trump supported anti-Semitic governor candidate in Pennsylvania. What are you talking about? People like find like these little things to talk about. That's like you know, what, Lewis Rosenberg. Well, what about Trump recognizing you know Israel? putting the, the embassy in Israel. What about him having a Jewish daughter? I mean, you, do you care about any of that or you just have to hate Trump because you have to hate Trump? I don't I don't understand it. I, I, I mean, I hate Trump. Like, I've never liked the guy. He's a loudmouth New Yorker. I never like loudmouth New Yorkers. I think he spent too much. I think he printed too much money. I think he did a lot of... I think he was too uh, aggressive. I don't think he did enough to reduce American activities overseas. Jupiter James says, thoughts on George Holtz from Comma.ai working as an intern at Twitter. I think it's great. I think it is true that George is actually working there. I think he's a great coder. I think he'll be there for a few months and he'll make a big difference and it's great to have him there. Rick Caruso says, is there problems with 4680 ramp and giga castings? I haven't heard of any problems with 4680 ramp or giga castings. I think we've seen that the foundation, Joe Tedmeyer posted a uh, picture or video showing that the foundations for the new Cybertruck Giga casting machine, the, the 9,000 ton Giga press, whatever, are in place. So they're making, it's probably gonna take a few months for them to get that installed. I haven't heard any problems with 4680 ramp. Uh, Tesla's battery development is going along. I actually, the one thing that, that came out of the Q3 call that, uh, that's sticking in my craw that I think I have to make a video about is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some, uh, some research and try to figure out, Elon said something about people have no idea what the R&D how many R&D projects we have at Tesla. They're very efficient with R&D, but they have a lot of R&D projects going. I'm convinced that one of them is mapping and navigation because it is the arguably worst part of FSD right now is mapping and navigation. I'm convinced they're going to create a new mapping system. Crowdsourced map. It just makes sense to me that you would crowdsource maps from, from the cars. So... Uh... Uh, status of $7,500 tax credit. As far as we know, the tax credit's going to apply to all Tesla cars for this year and next year. For, sorry, for 2023 and going forward. Uh, they were pretty confident that they will qualify for those credits. Trump does what the last guy he talked to suggested. Maybe. I don't know. If, test, if Twitter requires a parody tag, will you hate and stupid tag too? I don't think so. Uh, the bot is the phone. The problem, the problem with... with the parody tag is for accounts that are pretending to be something else and that deceives others. A hateful account or a stupid account do not deceive others into thinking something else is going on. How is the pod car moving forward? I've got a t-shirt coming soon. I, uh, in a few days, I'm driving my electric... V I bought an electric go-kart. I'm driving... I have an engineer in Georgia near Atlanta. I'm driving the pod car, the, the go-kart up to him. 
he's going to remove the steering wheel and the and the pedals and replace them with controls so that we will have a proof of concept arguably a pre-prototype but not really because it's smaller than i want but we should have a pre-prototype basically a remote control slightly scaled it's not like super small but it's like child size instead of adult size so it really should be like at least 10 to 20 percent larger than the one we got I was trying to get an appropriate size electric cart and I couldn't get somebody to sell me one. I was going to pay like $10,000 for two of them and I couldn't get them to give me an invoice or go forward. So I just gave up. Um, you poo poo all of Trump's accomplishments just because you don't like loudmouth New Yorkers. He got out of the Paris Agreement around Nike deal, fantastic trade deals. I don't know how fantastic the trade deals were. Um, I don't know that he... I don't know enough about the Paris thing to criticize it. I don't know enough about the Iran thing to criticize it. We still, let, look, we had troops in 177 countries under Bush light. We had troops in 177 countries under Obama. We have troops in 177 countries under Trump. And we had, like, foreign policy is not, you can think, you can tell yourself that foreign policy changed a lot. I don't think it did. I, but, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm defending him to the extent of saying he's, at least people are comparing him to Hitler. Like, come on. How much investment do you have in Tesla? It's nearly all of my liquid net worth is in Tesla. I don't want to say 99%, but it's in the high, it's in the 90s. I have uh, equity in a house that is not in Tesla yet. <laughs> what happened to your dog? The ex-wife got the dog. Um, I see that. I, I go to I visit my, my daughter once a week, and I see the dog and all that. So She still loves me. But I think there's a wash from gaining new Tesla customers versus lost Tesla customers due to Twitter noise. I think that the idea of Elon taking control of Twitter and letting Trump on that back on the platform, I think that has nearly zero impact on Tesla sales. It doesn't affect Tesla sales in Europe. It doesn't affect Tesla sales in China. Are there some Tesla buyers who are deciding not to buy a Tesla in the US? That's got to be a small impact. I mean, you know, 1% of sales, 2% of sales. There's plenty of people waiting to buy Tesla. This is not a problem. If I heard anything regarding 4680 capacity, I thought Tesla was supposed to be 100 gigawatts by the end of 22. It'd be 2,100 gigawatt hours. I don't remember if that was, I think you're right that that was the goal. They're very clearly not there, um, 100 gigawatt hours yet. I think the infrastructure in place to be at 100 gigawatt hours, but I don't think they've, I don't think they're ramped to that level yet. And if the 100 gigawatt hours, I think got a, I guess that was company wide, but you know, ultimately Giga Texas should be that capacity or more. Fremont is probably, Probably getting closer to their 10 gigawatt hour capacity. I'm not sure. Axel says Tesla full self driving beta does already have crowd, cloud crowd sourced mapping working. No, I don't think it does. I think it uses they use it to some extent to figure out certain intersections, but I don't think they're using it for mapping yet. Um. 42 Lou says, I've been a beta tester for 1.5 years and it still doesn't know where my house is. Maps are terrible. Yeah, that's kind of my point. I had this problem with my previous condo in Coral Springs, Florida, that it it didn't exactly get where my home was. It had a stop sign on the way. There's a lot of things that like, look, my car drove through that intersection three times. You should know there isn't a stop sign at that intersection by now. And that's the kind of thing where crowdsourcing could make a difference. And there are probably other Teslas. I think there was at least one or two other Teslas in the neighborhood. At some point, it should recognize, hey, we're not seeing a stop sign here anymore. Let's stop putting a stop sign here. Hey, his house is really here, not there. Let's figure that out. So friends and family don't seem to be listening about buying a new ICE car and how that will be like owning a horse very soon with Tesla and FSD beta. How would you guide me to explain to them? Good question. This is Sean Salzberger. So I'm probably the wrong person to ask this question. I don't think there are easy answers to the question, how do you explain to people the benefits of buying a Tesla versus uh, an internal combustion engine car? I think the thing is, the best you can do is ask them what questions they have about Tesla. So invite them to see your Tesla, show them the software. Show them. My favorite thing to show people is I'll walk over to the car and I live in Florida and I'll say, hit the, the microphone, I'll say, take me to Austin, Texas and show them that it maps out the entire trip. And I'll show them that when you're stopped charging, you can watch YouTube videos in the car. And I'll talk to them, you know, they'll have questions about range. I'll say, well, I drove to California and back. I drove to Austin and back. I drove to New York and New Hampshire and back. And it's a great road trip car. You know, if you want to save two or three hours and that's like the most important thing to you, then I suppose a gas car is better if all you do is drive road trips. But if you also drive around town and you can charge in your garage, there's a lot of advantages to owning it. But I think the best thing is to invite them to ask you questions or ask them what they think about Tesla and 
ask them, do you want to hear my thoughts on that? And if they don't want to hear it, then you're just going to harden them by, by trying to force them to believe it. Ask them if they want to go for a drive. Show them the acceleration. Jim Manley, butts and seats. Word of butt. Butts and seats. Yep. Um, and if, you, if you're up to it, let them drive your car for a week. Not just a day, you know. I drove a Model Y for seven hours. I think that was helpful. But I really think it's when you drive... When, I, when you drive a Tesla for a week and then you go back, like, I don't think one day is enough. It's got to be more than one day. When you drive a Tesla for a week and then you go back to driving a gas car, you're like, but why does it, but like one week in a Tesla, you, they're not going to want to drive another car. I, 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 I mischaracterized the ADL. Danny Davis says I mischaracterized the ADL. Please tell me how. I will be talking about that more. Uh, just a quick reminder at the top of the chat and the video description. Uh, in about 15 minutes, we're going to switch over and end this live stream. We're going to switch over to warrenredlick.locals.com, the daily lie. And we're going to talk more about that. Um, many people only understand once an EV is cheaper than an ICE car. Well, an EV is already cheaper than an ICE car. A Tesla Model 3 is already cheaper than a, BM a comparable BMW let's say five series. There's a lot more interior room in a BMW in a, in a Tesla model three than there is in a BMW three series. The better comparison is the Tesla, uh, the BMW uh, five series. The Tesla is already less expensive. And then when you take into account how much less it is to power it and how much less you spend on maintenance, the Tesla kills. And it's, it's cheaper to own than a model th than a BMW three series, but it's significantly cheaper to own than a BMW five series. And it's a better comparison to the five series than it is to the three series. Um, it's not just gas, it's oil changes, it's mufflers, it's, there's so many more moving parts, there's spark plugs, there's so many different things that can go wrong in a gas car. And then the gas cars just lag. Like when you press the accelerator of a Tesla, it just goes. Mitchell Warridge, I drove a 7,000 mile road trip over three weeks during the summer on my ancient Model S, no issues. Yep. Um... Tesla energy should be expanded even more aggressively since the, I'll tell you, like my, I take people on plaid runs and I, I think it's like too much for them. You got to be careful, like what you show them, but 42 loses. There needs to be a Tesla in the affordable segment. So Tesla is not producing enough cars right now for the segments that they operate in. So as they ramp production, as Model Y grows in particular, Cybertruck is going to be hitting a segment that Tesla doesn't touch yet. Cybertruck is going to be filling a whole different segment. And that's not necessarily the affordable segment. Um, and Cybertruck will kill in that market. So I'll be growth there. Model S and X, their growth is sort of limited. Model 3, I don't, I don't see that they're making an effort to grow Model 3. I think they're really all in on Model Y growth. And then the robo taxi platform will come in 2024, which is about when Tesla's production hits the volume that they need to reach out to another segment. It, you know, it doesn't matter. Reaching reaching that other segment doesn't matter until until you're producing enough cars that you because you know that segment is so much bigger that you have to produce a whole lot more cars. I mean, suppose they go into that segment, they come out with this robo taxi platform vehicle, and it sells like. You know, it wipes out uh, Camry and Accord and Civic and Corolla and all, you know, like you got to be able to make enough cars for the segment. Uh, Mark Potoshnik says 2025, all new cars will be EVs. Extend the life of your ice until then. I don't think it's 2025, Mark. I, I want to believe that, but I don't think production of electric vehicles is going to be enough. There's uh, something like 70 million new cars a year worldwide. So if you had robo taxis, you might conceivably replace all new cars, but the problem is that there's, there's, there's existing cars that need to be replaced too. So you're not just replacing new cars, you're replacing the existing fleet. I think it's going to be several years before there's no new cars. I mean, the only thing is that the new, the gas car makers are going to start going bankrupt. And no, it's funny thing is I took a friend for a ride in the Plaid and she has a, a Model 3 performance with 3.1 seconds, 0 to 60. So Plaid isn't that much faster than that. So, yeah. Damien says, my concern about Tesla is they seem to be paper thin with regard to repairs after a crash or multiples of $10,000 when you look at wham, bam, Tesla. I don't think that's true. I think that it depends what the crash is. I think lots of cars are totaled when they have a crash. But when do we think we'll hear about new gigas, Warren? I don't, I don't know. I thought we were supposed to hear about a new giga factory by the end of the year. But maybe, you know, Elon's Twitter distraction is stopping him from telling us. I think there's a good chance we hear about a new giga factory by the end of the year, but 
I'm, I'm bad at short-term predictions. We know that. Estimate Tesla price by 2030. Tesla stock by 2030 should be more than... I think it's at least $6,000 a share. A minimum. 10000 is possible. 20000 is possible. Depends on robo-taxi. Depends on a lot of other things. But just, you know, if you, uh, really quick on that. The, my math on that is if you just go to 3 terawatt hours and $500 a kilowatt hour, you get $1.5 in revenue. You get about $300 billion in net profit. Times the 30 PE ratio is $9 trillion market cap, which is about $3,000 a share. And I think that leaves out a lot. That leaves out a lot of stuff. So I think, I think $3,000 a share is a minimum and four or $5,000 a share is more likely. Am I considering a recession in 2023 in my estimates? I, uh, well, I don't, I talk about 2023, but they're not estimates. They're like aspirations, right? I, I don't, there's so many bad things that can happen in a year that I don't go there. My estimates for 2030 don't depend on what happens in 2023. Hello, Jessica Kirsch. I hope Jessica is warm. Jessica was cold last night. Axel says Tesla Model 2 is on the way, on the works, and that car is going to be a lot cheaper. Maybe it's so, uh, it's not Model 2. They're not going to call it Model 2. Which will come, Giga Florida or Giga New York? Um, there already is a factory in, in Buffalo, New York area. I don't think Elon wants to do more in New York State. Giga Florida... I like the Giga Orlando idea, but I'm, I'm less optimistic about that. Uh, I do think it would be good. But, you know, because you like a, some of the materials you might be sourcing might be coming from Latin America. That would make sense. Uh, Tesla minivan, I think, becomes irrelevant with the with the robo taxi platform. I think there's gonna be a van version of the robo taxi platform. Uh, Sean Salzberger says, I hope we can get human pilots off the road in internal combustion engine cars ASAP and start saving lives with FSD beta safety. So there's a, the global fleet is 2 billion vehicles. We will not make enough self-driving vehicles for more than a decade to take all human pilots off the road. It's going to be well into the 2030s before we take all human pilots off the road. You're just, you're just not going to be enough self-driving cars. It, the production of the vehicles that can do that is just not going to be big enough for a long, for a long time. So it's in the 2030s at the, at the earliest. It might be 2040 at best. Oh, Jessica says, I was out at the proposed Tesla lithium refinery site on Friday outside of Corpus Christi. I released a video this morning. Please check out Jessica's channel. I'll be checking that out later today. I'd like to see that. So thank you, Jessica, for doing that. Jessica lives in Brownsville about... Or, uh, star, somewhere near Starbase, about two hours, I think, from Corpus Christi. So, average vehicle is in the road for 12 years and 1% on the road after 20 years. ICE vehicles will be on for decades, even after 100% of new vehicles are EVs, which will take well over a decade. Jim Manley, I roughly agree with you. I think what may happen is that the cost of maintaining your ICE vehicle, number one, new production of ICE vehicles is probably going to tail off in five to 10 years. And then, yeah, those vehicles will potentially last 10 years or 20 years. But at a certain point, once a vehicle gets beyond 10 years, for a lot of them, the cost of maintaining them goes up. And the cost of riding in EV robo-taxis is going to go down. So I think you're going to get to a point where they start junking those vehicles, even if they have some life left in them. That's a guess. I don't know. What do I think about China EV status? Would you say they're ahead of the West? I think China's electric vehicle industry is ahead of everyone except Tesla. Um, I think China is buying more EVs. I think China is more forward thinking. The Chinese government is more forward thinking about EVs. I think that the Inflation Reduction Act, even though I don't think it was a good decision to do the things that they do, will accelerate transition to electric vehicles here. Bastiano says it baffles me how many people don't understand that Twitter is part of Elon's grand vision. I think I'm going to restrict Twitter talk until the, the Daily Lie in about 10 minutes on um Redlick.locals.com, link in the top of the chat, link in the description below. By the way, check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com, the Cybertruck t-shirt, the Tesla Nair t-shirt, the Tesla's the next Tesla t-shirt. I know it's tough. Tesla shareholders, like, I want to say this really quick about Tesla stock. I'm a long-term investor. I'm nearly all in on Tesla, other than the house that I own and, like, guns and cash. I mean, I have a little bit of other stuff, not much. and. Um, I'm not worried. Like I, you know, I see all these people worried, you know, if, if you are a long-term investor, unless you are literally living off the stock today, I can understand your concern. If you are 
buying stock on margin, you're facing margin pressure as well. I didn't tell you to buy stock on margin. If you are a short-term trader or an options trader and the stock being depressed affects your trading, well, that's not a long-term investor. If you are a long-term investor, this is not something to worry about. It just isn't. Um, you look at the long-term path of the company, it's pretty obvious that Tesla is going to dominate transportation. Not just the car market, it's going to dominate transportation, especially along with boring company. And once they start, and, and like, like the, sh the size of the global transportation market is so huge. And Tesla is going to take such a large share of the global transportation market that valuation is going to go through the roof. And then you've got Tesla Energy, and they're going to dominate in the energy. Just like SpaceX is dominating, dominating launch, you look at how SpaceX is dominating the launch industry. That's what Tesla is going to do to energy. That's what Tesla is going to do to transportation. And you just look at where that leads in terms of valuation and you just come up with crazy numbers. Like $3,000 a share is low. That's a 15x from today. So, you know, if you, if you need to sell your stock next week, then the current share price is a problem. If you're just watching it and you're, if you're deriving your sense of self-worth based on what the stock price is of Tesla today, then your, 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 your values are misplaced. Your, your, what you're focusing on is misplaced. Um, the stock price is going to be what it's going to be. We can't control it. There's going to be ups and downs that don't have to make sense. Elon selling stock does not affect the value of the company. It doesn't. The, the, your stock price ultimately long-term is determined by the value of the company and Elon selling stock doesn't affect that. There's no Twitter overhang. There's a lot of voices telling you that this is what's going to happen with the stock in the next quarter, or this is, these are the catalysts or this is, all that stuff is mumbo jumbo bullshit. Nobody can predict short-term stock prices. Anybody who could predict short-term stock prices would be a billionaire in a week. And they wouldn't be wasting time telling you what's going to happen with short-term stock prices. They would be trading on their own knowledge. They would be making crazy amounts of money. They would be a billionaire in a week. And they would, you know, anybody who isn't a billionaire today hasn't known that much about short-term stock trading for on, on, until the last few weeks. And then therefore they don't really know that much about it anyway. Uh, Mitchell, I think you said this to me before about converting some of my Tesla shares from my IRA to a Roth IRA. Um, I might do it. I don't know. I'm less worried about that. When do you think we will? I, I'd like, I don't want to play tax games, and I don't trust them not to screw with Roth IRAs in the future anyway. <laughs> STFU and let Elon be Elon. Let Elon be Elon would be a good shirt. Um, FSD permitted in Frisco and Phoenix. All um, I think that we're going to see all silent on Tesla power utility license in Germany. I haven't heard anything about that. What, when do I think we will have almost 100% EV on our streets at here in America or globally if you're comfortable speaking to that? I think we're talking decades. I think Jim's right. Jim addressed this earlier. You know, the average internal combustion engine vehicle that's produced today will last minimum 10 years. And, you know, aver the average minimum average is at least 10 years. It's probably 15 to 20 years. I think there will come a point where there are enough EVs and the, and the robo-taxi network is live and the, the cost of maintaining a... 10 plus year old internal combustion engine vehicle will be high enough that it won't make sense to do it anymore and they'll start junking them. Um, they'll start recycling them anyway, I hope. The Wiz, I wish you luck on your heart procedure. Um, cost per mile for internal combustion engine will skyrocket expensive parts, less gas stations. Uh, I don't know. I think the price of gas is going to come down. I think as EVs really start, this is one of those things like as EVs dominate, if demand for oil drops, then the price of oil drops and the price of gasoline drops. Now, it could lead to some bankruptcies in the oil industry, maybe this, but I, I think we may see the price of gasoline goes down significantly and that lowers the cost per mile for internal combustion engine vehicles. But that's only a part of the cost of internal combustion engine vehicles. So, um, so Jim Manley says ICE vehicle parts are still in stock for 1970s models. 20% of new production is spare parts. Yes, but when it comes time that those vehicles no longer make sense to maintain, that's all. It's just, it's just a question of if a large share of those, you know, like, like there'll be internal combustion engine vehicles on the road for a hundred years. I mean, there's still people riding horses. There'll be some, there'll be some small share of internal combustion engine vehicles. It's just a question of when. Matt Burns says, are you moving to Florida? I'm already in Florida. I lived in Florida. I live in Florida. I've been in Florida for like 11, 12 years, 11 years. 11, it's not 11 and a half yet. Um, I'm staying in Florida. I'm moving from this place in Satellite Beach to a new place in Cape Canaveral, Florida. So 
I am I'm like stewing on like next. I have a lead one year lease that that ends in the end of October next year. Do I move to Japan? Do I build a, a solar farm apartment prototype and live in that? I got a lot of different ideas about what I'm going to do in the next year. Um, right now I'm on this kick of I think I'm going to go to Japan for three months because that's how long a visa is. Give Japan a try for three months and see if I want to try to make it longer. That's that's a rough plan. Um, when will robo taxis be a reality? I think robo taxi start Tesla robo taxi. They're already robo taxis. They're Waymo and Cruise robo taxis. They suck, but they're already there. I think Tesla robo taxi network goes live the end of this year, early next year, somewhere. But hard to make those short term predictions. Giga Somalia, no. All right, we got a few minutes left. I'm just gonna. Follow in the chat just a little bit longer and see what's going on. Profits from supercharging network when opened up to non-Teslas. There aren't that many non-Teslas to generate that much profit from the supercharger network by adding those vehicles. The the value of to Tesla of opening the network to other vehicles goes up when those other vehicles become more common. And I don't see the other car makers scaling production of their vehicles. They talk about it, but they don't do it. Giga Chad, what's my one year? I don't do one year price targets. Nope. Why Japan? I lived in Japan. I'm thinking that Japan would be a good place for the pod car. Uh, Fukuoka, Japan is has a startup visa program. Fukuoka, Japan is in southern Japan. It's sort of one of the warmer. It's the warmest large city in Japan, other than maybe I don't know how big Okinawa's big city is. Um. So and I've been I've been to Fukuoka before. I like the city. I will probably stop in Osaka. Yes, but um, you know. The plan is the plan is not. I don't have any particular plans to visit Osaka. I plan to visit Kyoto and probably going to Japan in May or June with my kids for week to ten days. And we'll stop in Kyoto, Tokyo, Kyoto, and Fukuoka, maybe Hiroshima, since I lived in Hiroshima before. Who's going to tour your Model X while you're gone? Uh, if I go to Japan, I will sell the X. The big question is if like if Cybertruck comes before I go to Japan, what do I do? Um, so I buy Cybertruck and hold it. I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet. Supercharger network should become the standard for charging infrastructure for all EVs. Am I buying more what? Am I buying more Tesla stock? When we sell my house, I'm going to buy more Tesla stock. I may buy some call options soon. Long off call options. Did I make peace with Gary Black? There will be no peace with Gary Black. Gary Black and I are pretty clearly at odds and will never be uh, happy with each other. And um, frankly, I think I have a very, very low opinion of Gary Black on, on a subject like honesty. Okay. Like a broad scope of, of the, the, the issue of honesty. And I, I can't have a relationship with somebody who's fundamentally dishonest. And, and I'm sure he thinks I'm mean, I'm nasty, I'm a bully, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think very, I have a lot of negative things to say about Gary Black, and it's not going to change. And I, my opinion has been there all the time. Japan will be a fun adventure. I lived in, for those who don't, I lived in Japan for a year. I speak Japanese. Uh, reasonably well. I love Japanese food. I lost, I'll lose like 30 pounds if I go to Japan. It'll be a healthy 30 pound loss. I already have a shed in the forest, Bordun. I've already done the, the you should follow my channel. I did, I have an apocalypse cabin. It's in the, it's on the chat. It's in the video stream. It's in, it's on my channel. Why not go to Thailand? I don't have a desire for Thailand. It's not, I, you know, yeah, yes, yes, there's a shot at women in Japan as well, but uh, Jessica, I expect the first cyber truck will be quad motor and that's what I would buy if I do. All right, so um, I'm about to wrap this up. So I want to thank especially uh, the moderators, Mark Plot, Mark Patochnik. I don't know if Jim Whitehead was here or not. Uh, any other moderators, uh, thank everybody for watching. Please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. We're moving over to the Locals platform, warrenredlick.locals.com. We're going to talk about Twitter there in a lot more depth. We're going to do the first half for all free members. It's free to, to join and watch. If you want to watch the second half of today's video that's going to be on there, it's going to be for supporters only. There's about half the content on there is for supporters only. Uh, MC, uh, just address this really quickly because MC says posting somebody's DMs without permission was shady. When somebody lies, manipulates, uh, deceives, and bullies and int tries to intimidate in, in your DMs, then their whining about your, your DM, their DMs being made public is their fault. And I didn't name her when I published her DMs. I published a very limited amount of D her DMs. She chose to make public that it was her. She chose to expose that she's a liar, she's a fraud, she's dishonest, she's manipulative. She chose to expose that. I didn't do that. She did. I used a brief bit of her DMs to show what Gary Black was doing. She chose to identify herself. 
he chose to to break our friendship by lying and manipulating and deceiving and, and all that so you can you can take her side all you want you, all, you, you can if you join the local if you join the locals platform you become a supporter the full dms are in there you can read what she did you can read what she said and you can decide for yourself so with that said, check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Please join us on the Locals platform, warnredlick.locals.com. Check out my other videos.